All right, hello and welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. We are playing Blades in the Dark today. We are uh, continuing our gutter, which is a uh, hawker, vice-dealing folk uh, campaign that we're working on. Uh, we have thus far completed one score, and it was a hell of a score uh, as for, for the first one out. Uh, and then we did some downtime uh, last week, so people got some, some projects going. And uh, this week, we... Uh, we figure out what our new score is going to be, and we go on it. Uh, I have, I knew that they they basically gave me the idea that they were, they wanted to sell some drugs. So there we go. They did say specific, so we'll just kind of figure that out as we go, which is a fun, crazy part of uh, of Blades of the Dark. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hello to those uh, who are in chat. Uh, saw some folks over uh, that came over from Garblag, Beowulf, Aaron. Nice to see you. Thank you for the sub, Aaron. Uh, Bert, what's going on? Uh, hopefully. Hopefully we do uh, we do a good job today and, uh, and give you some entertainment uh, so the shitty week ends well. Uh, and of course, there's too old to Twitch because <laughs> <laughs> we've been. Uh, if you haven't watched any of our other streams this week, we have a lot of birthdays in September amongst our crew. Uh, everybody, with the exception of me, that you now see on the screen, has had a birthday over the course of the last week. Uh, Ashley's was this was last last Friday during a Delta Green game. Melissa's was last night during a Delta Green game. Long, that's today during our Blades yeah. in the Dark game. Yeah, and then our friend Jen, who's in our Alien game, hers was on Monday. So it's like ah, so many. So we will uh, we will continue the now tradition of me singing Happy Birthday in a character a character voice. Um, why don't we, do we want to just get that out of the way? Let's just get that out of the way yeah, before sure. we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have an idea of voice, uh, of what voice I have to do this in? Yeah, let's, think of, let's go with our Delta Green character, Dr. Friend. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, jeez. That's a tricky one. Okay, let me. I got to get Good back luck. here. Oh. Uh, that's like my. That one. I was not expecting this do one. Do you need to start um, with some therapy? Would uh, that help? Uh, uh, Agent Chelsea. No, that's not right. No. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? Uh, what? <laughs> What 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 would you say is your deepest and darkest you secret? Secrets. Yes, yes. I am Doctor Maxim Doctor Maximo friend. Ah, mine and Damon hand. Okay, so I'm here to wish. Uh, 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 was it Geburtstag? I think that was what that's what it was for for birthday in German. Uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Day to you. Happy birthday, my name Floyd Longley. Happy birthday to you. You need to work in <laughs> one intense part. It was <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I gotta do one intense. Oh god, I need to work in intense parts too. Oh jeez, that's hard. With Derek the not here to antagonize him. Up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what would you say is your age right now? How old are you? It's 28 now. Wow, 28. Very good, very good. So good, so good. I will make, uh, I'll make the proper documentation. Uh, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. He's a new one. He's not one I've yeah. worked on very often. Still working on, I don't know. I used to take a bunch of German classes, but I just suck at doing a German accent. But I was good at like, doing the German Whatever. Anyway, uh, cool. Well, thanks for that. Uh, if you know anyone who's got <laughs> birthdays in October, uh, invite them onto our stream. Because uh, there we go. Uh, let's go. Let's get started. Uh, so before we introduce characters, other things about our stream, because it's the standard thing that we do Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays is when we stream. Uh, Saturdays is our Blades of the Dark Day. Uh, Friday is our Delta Green Day, and Monday we alternate between Alien from Free League and Ultraviolet Grasslands. This coming Monday, which is the 27th, we'll be doing Ultraviolet Grasslands, so you can come watch our psychedelic Oregon Trail game and see uh, and see that nonsense, because uh, it's just nonsense. It's absolute wonderful nonsense. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, oh, and I should also mention, uh, next Thursday, on the 30th of September, uh, over on Garblag Games, uh, I am going to be starting up a new Delta Green game uh, with some of the folks over there. Uh, it's going to be, it's not going to be Impossible Landscapes, which is what we've been doing on Fridays. It's going to be a different game. 
Uh, I'm not saying what yet, uh, but uh, but yeah, come back and uh, come check that out. Twitch.tv slash Garbag Games. And you can uh, you can watch us play some Delta Green. Uh, so you can see folks like Aaron, who's in the chat. You can see uh, old, old Maddie Two Arms uh, and uh, our friend Evan and Megan. Some of our Call of Cthulhu crew. Uh, we're gonna be switching over to Thursdays and doing a uh, probably about a four to five session, something around there, uh, Delta Green op. And if it goes well, maybe we'll we'll revisit it in the future at some point. Uh, Beowulf, thank you for the sub. Very much appreciate that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's start, let's, uh, let's go over your characters and then we'll dive in and we'll, we'll start a new score. So, uh, who are you and, uh, you know, what's your playbook? Uh, give us a detail about your character, that kind of thing. And then we'll keep it going. So, uh, Ashley, you're up. Uh, uh, ve- uh who are you? Who are, who are you? Uh, I'm who playing you? Cephla Savoy. Um, she's a whisperer, um, background Akros. She was a Leviathan hunter. Um, her vice is pleasure. So we've already established that like, I do my channeling and attuning by like dancing. Um, I go to ye old medieval raids for fun. Um, <laughs> like in a crypt, uh, in the one- It is an industrial city. So I think that makes sense. There's, yeah. it makes sense for there to be raids. It's an industrial city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. Um, <laughs> and we were joking about how, like, if we get the barge and like, I can't do my vice at the, if I get banned, I'm just going to lock myself in a room and flip the light switch on and off as I dance by myself to simulate the rave. Uh, yeah. you could do a little Billy Idol. Do you get, <laughs> do you get that reference? Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's keep it going. Uh, it's the, it's, it's, ah, hey, uh, hey, Oliver. Hey, Oliver. Oh, where is you? Oh, do where is do where is where is see something like that? I don't know. Whatever. Who the hell are you? What are you playing? Yeah, I'm all over the club playing the slide of the group. It's uh <laughs> like the talker, very like plan maker sort of. Yeah. Like, social manipulator. Yeah, social manipulator. Yeah. And yeah. he's a slim guy. He carries a hunch. But by choice, he can always stand up because he's really tall when he does. And then you do it, and and it's sort of like you do that to sort of lure people into a false sense of security or something like that, so they're not intimidated by your your demeanor or whatever it might be. Nice. I like it. I very much like that. Uh, And your vice was, what was your vice? What did you do last week? I chose gambling, so I did a little Oh, that's right. We met our... 12 yeah. gallon hat Texan, apparently, that's wandering about the streets of Tusk Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Uh, all right, and then finally, we got Melissa. Melissa, who are you playing? Who are you? Uh, I am playing Uma Dunvo. Uh, she is uh, the lone Aruvian of this group. Uh, background is an academic, and she is a leech. Right, and the leech is sort of like anything from you know anybody who kind of plays with all chemical sciences, or it could be a tinker, or you know someone who messes with spark craft, and you know maybe even an engineer, uh, anything like that. There's a lot of different things they could do. Anyone who kind of tinkers with with that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm more uh, of the alchemist type. Perfect. Did you figure out what your uh, what your formula was? You had homework. Oh. That's the look of somebody who didn't do their homework. <laughs> uh, I knew it well. Okay, uh, so. You are the gutter witches. You have targeted Silkshore as kind of your area uh, where you prefer to, uh, you know, that's your sales tor- territory, basically. And uh, in our first score, you all aligned a bit with a fairly powerful group known as the Unseen, uh, who gave you a little bit of a lead uh, if you would kind of uh, assist them uh, in. Uh, being a thorn in the side of another uh, fairly powerful group known as the Hive, which are this kind of group of, of you know, uh, relatively on the level merchants, but at the same time they kind of have that that seedy underbelly where they kind of control other things. And those two uh, those two big groups are, are kind of at war and they're fighting over uh, certain certain tr- certain vice trades and other things. And you, as a as a tier zero low level group of uh, of vice dealers have, have joined up with Hive, uh, with the Unseen, excuse me. And you went to the Bridge of the Lonely to interfere with what looked like a kind of a product transfer to low level street dealers. And um, long story short, uh, you stole the barge on which the product uh, uh, was uh, was packed. 
Uh, you summoned uh, a canal leviathan that got people killed and drew, oh, a hell of a lot of attention. And uh, yeah, and I think during your downtime, you've spent some time trying to get falsify some ownership papers, some licensing papers, and try to change the look of the, the ship as well so that it's not going to be as easily detected uh, by members of the Hive as they likely are looking for the very people who pulled off this this bold and dastardly plan. So last week we discussed uh, kind of generally what you guys wanted to do uh, for the score. And the idea was that you were going to try to do a sale. Uh, and and so you guys can talk, talk it out. I mean, you can do it like free play in character. Uh, but the, the big question is whether, whether you want to sell the normal goods, uh, which is basically like Black Lotus and Dream Powder, kind of, you know, psychonautical type drugs. Uh, which you know you have a significant amount of and you're storing in a temp warehouse. Um, Or, as you were kind of going through the barge itself, you found, hidden in some kind of smuggling compartment, uh, what we are now referring to as spirit sap, a uh, a very interesting substance that uh, has a very specific clientele, and that's ghosts uh, who, who want to take it specifically because it keeps, it allows them to stay tethered uh, to uh, the kind of material world in some way, and it masks them at the same time uh, from folks like the uh, like the spirit wardens or from like the gondoliers by spirit wells, things like that, who might uh, might be able to to detect them and ghost bust them away. Um, so talk amongst yourselves, like what 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 uh, what each each of you kind of vie for in terms of the next score. So my thought was kind of from the volume perspective that if we have a warehouse that's temporary, um, that we should sell off the large quantity that we have. So that was my thought is kind of getting rid of the the bulk item that we have and clearing up the warehouse before we use it. Yeah, because our lair our lair is secure, so we could keep the ghost stuff at our lair, no problem. Yeah, it's just kind of what do we do first? Yeah, no, Sefa would agree. Let's get rid of the normal stuff. Let's drug up some artists, you know? <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe go to the club, a different so, club. Uh, so I'll say, like, one thing uh, that we did last week in downtime was Uma told us a bit about uh, her family connections, who apparently are a lesser lesser bit of uh high rise uh, circus folks who um who aren't the spark flyers themselves and so i would say probably while you were there um you caught wind of a of a fairly special event because if you're looking to sell this stuff you're looking for something likely that's uh, out of the ordinary it's not just any old club which probably already has you know it's regular sell it's 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 you're looking for something where you can push a whole lot of product all at once, something out of the ordinary. And I'm going to say, Uma, um, we're going to say one of the strong men, or at least a couple of the strong men that were, that you don't necessarily know personally, but maybe your brother um, was working out with as he was trying to move on from just the flying, the trapeze artist stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, you probably overheard that there was going to be some kind of a fairly, fairly big event in a couple of days there uh, where the entire spark grounds uh, in uh, in Silkshore uh, are going to be closed down for a private party. Uh, apparently some noble, uh, some noble's kid uh, in his Charter Hall University fraternity have decided that they just want the place to themselves one night. Uh, and what better, what better <laughs> place to go than... A frat party than a frat party uh, at some kind of circus area. And uh, the good news is, is, is the rumor is, is that he, they are definitely one to partake in the uh, psychonautical, uh, the psychonautical drugs. So that could potentially work. Unless, unless you all have a uh, alternative I- idea that we want to explore. I, maybe we can kind of combo a couple people because I actually have a friend who is a psychonaut semi like literal friend that i established is veldrin the psychonaut okay 
So. All right. Jeff, you so, had me at frat house. Yeah, <laughs> you had frat house. Okay. <laughs> you okay. Know. It sounds good. Um, somebody actually like running here or is in our supply. What do you mean? Of the goods, like how much do we have that we're trying to get rid of? You. So basically, you guys already have your own supply of like normal stuff that you have dealer, like you have street level dealers. These these are things that don't necessarily show up in the mechanics. Like there's people who just sort of push your product here and there. Uh, and you have your own your own goods, your own basic goods here and there. Maybe, you know, Uma or, or Seth that deal with it. But what you're talking about here is like the massive, you know, the supply that you've just brought in from this barge hit, which is basically giving you, you know, more supply uh to deal with and trying to push so you would probably know especially oliver you would probably know this that trying to push all of that in the same locales that you normally would might flood the market a bit so if you took what you the normal neighborhoods that you work in the normal places you would try to give them more and push that same stuff just higher quantity that could that sounds good they might buy it all but that might you know might also have some 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 other consequences where if there's too much of this on the streets, the pricing of what you're trying to sell might get hit by that as well. Okay. All right. So we know where we're selling this stuff. Yeah. Cephla hears party and frat boys. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, Uma, you heard that the, uh, you, you got the day, you know exactly when it's going to happen. You know that it's going to be, you know exactly where it's going to be. It's going to be at the spark grounds, this big party. Uh, so if, and that's where all of these, these other folks are going to be. Um, it's the question of, is that, is that the idea you're going to, you're going to target this specific, this specific, uh, event, or are you going to target the, uh, this, this Lord, the psychonautical Lord in some other way? So, like, I do. I do work on a college campus. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, Ashley? What about your friend? Like, well, what we could do with your friend is that could that could come into play during the engagement role as a person who can give you a boost, like, and gives you some some advice mm. and things like that. So that's where it could come into play. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we can kind of be funneling this. Um, you know, kind of, this isn't our normal um, audience, so to speak, uh, but maybe Veldrin okay. might be looking right. for something to help make that party special. And we have something new and different. So let's go ahead and just jump right into the, to the engagement role then. Okay. So we've got, um, cause you've already know, I, I mean, you, you already have an idea of, of certain things. So the question then is, what's this going to be the uh, member that the, the, there's like two quite there's a two things two things you have to give me one is basically the type of plan and then the other is the the detail right and so the type of plan you can choose from assault which is some kind of like you're doing violence deception which you're doing some kind of lore or trick or manipulation stealth where you're trying to trespass unseen Occult, where you're trying to engage a supernatural power social where you're trying to negotiate bargain or persuade Transport, where you're trying to carry cargo or people through danger. You sound like an assault to me. <laughs> <laughs> Take these drugs. Beat you up. Um, so what are you thinking? So looking at stealth, it says like the point of infiltration. Mm -hmm. So maybe we're like moving in and around, but nobody's ever going to remember who we are. Like okay. everybody like got this thing, but nobody can clearly remember like who it was. Yeah. I mean, stealth makes sense in, in this case. I think it makes sense. Anybody have any other ideas or do we want to go with stealth? Yeah, it was either that or social, but stealth sounds interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, that was the second one I was thinking. Okay. So uh, then we're going to, if we're going to do stealth, then we need the point of infiltration. How... Uh, so the idea of like, what's, how are you getting into the spark grounds basically is the idea you're trying to sneak your way onto the grounds during this private party. Can that be where my friend comes in? Because he is generally supplying the, someone within this fraternity. And so like, he was already supposed to be there. And so like, he would kind of let us in. Would that work? 
Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. We're, we're already there. We've been posted there for three days beforehand. We just never <laughs> left. <laughs> You're just looking there. Yeah, the we're just hiding. Time. Okay. We look like um, we're just like sleeping in the park. Yeah. And then, so it's like, more like, of a like, hiding in plain sight type of thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. as your as your kind of wor- you're a you're a known uh, you're sort of a known commodity uh, as part of what's his name, Veldrin. Yes, Veldrin. Okay, so the idea is to hide in plain sight as sort of Veldrin's uh, lackeys or dealers or something like that. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, a couple other ideas in chat. Off, is it? That's a good question. Oh, what is that? Because like we're basically like we're not we're we're just taking his sales. If he, this is his sales ground. Again, the other way you can involve Veldrin, don't forget, is like when you do the engagement role. One of the things you say is that one of your one of your contacts is helping you in some way. And that's where you get like an extra die. Like that's like the mechanical yeah. use of, of that. So, but we can say this like it, that that Feldrin has set up like some to sort of steal an idea that Beowulf dropped in chat has set up some kind of uh, almost like waiters serving staff to oh. serve drinks and booze. And you guys are wearing like these these Venetian masks, Ooh. and you're yeah, and you're and you're part of that staff. Okay, Put the hand underneath the tray. Okay, so that's what we're saying. You're you're going in as under you're going in hiding in plain sight as Veldrin's like wait staff. Something like that. Beautiful. Okay, awesome. So let's hit that engagement roll then. So we'll go through this. Um all right. Let's see. Uh so a couple questions. Uh is this operation particularly bold or daring? What do we think? You wanna wanna make a case? Was particularly um, bold or daring. So what are, what's the area that we're? You're going to the Spark, spark Grounds in the Silk Shore. That's the idea. Okay. It seems okay. like. Is the hive particularly active in the Spark Grounds or no? The hive is active in basically all of all of Bla- all all of uh, Duskfall. Uh, but you yeah. know that they are specifically uh, their their network of um, kind of under. Uh, you know, underworld, uh, underworld mercantilism is uh, is of note in Silkshore. This isn't as like direct though as it was last time. Last time you were going yeah. right for a hive issue, so like this yeah. is a little different. Are nobles or lords like higher, or, like seen in high regard in society? Sort of. Uh, yeah, they're like the you're talking about like the rich folk. Uh, yeah. Essentially, is what you're after here. Like this, these are rich folks that are throwing their money around. Uh, deciding to do some kind of carnival ground thingy. So, so maybe like even targeting. It's like you said it was like a lord that we're targeting. You no, know, like a noble's kid. Noble. Yeah, like yeah. a noble's kid. Maybe that in itself is sort of like sounds good to me. That, or I think even like our immediate heat level, and it <laughs> might not have been so long since we stole the goods, might affect it as well. I like I like I like longs. I think. Yeah. I mean, you you only get one die from it. You don't. You can't get more than one for yeah. it. But I'm gonna give you a, say plus one for that. Does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target, or hit them where they're weakest? I think yeah. I think they're yeah. the the like your target is specifically this noble this time, right? This uh, let's see, get your name. The name you get is Errol Burnsides, Lord Burnsides, or or soon to be Lord Burnside's. Um, I think it makes sense. He's with his fraternity. He's uh, he's at known. Party. He's at a party. This yeah, is yeah. This like is your, perfect. Your card's not really that up. Oh yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, I th- and like they've they've specifically bought out the whole carnival for the night, and so they they expect it all to be safe ground for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll. And then here we got the question for Uma. Um, can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight for this operation? And we've already got that in place. Yep, Belgian. Um, then are any enemies or rivals interfering in the operation? Don't worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead and <laughs> get rid of one of those dice. Don't worry about oh. that. Um, 
And then are there any other elements that you might want to consider? So uh, maybe a lower tier target will give you play. What? No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're having fun. We're having fun. Uh, okay. I think the only um, thing here might be what Ashley was saying is that there's a possibility that if at the end of the night, Veldrin feels like he didn't get what he was hoping to get from this, hmm? then he might need to get cut in with some coin. Well, then you have coin to, to pay him off. We can do the whole thing where you kind of pay somebody off at the end, kind of like you did with the Unseen. I think that's yeah, the least of your like, concerns. Uh, thank you, sir. I think that's the least of your concerns in this situation. Jeff Scrog. <laughs> no, then what? I, I want to reconcile my ex-boyfriend, please. <laughs> <You're laughs> ex-boyfriend. Oh, God. Uh, okay, so who would like to do the honors uh, from my calculations from things I know that you don't know? Birthday uh, boy. Uh, you guys can roll 2d6 here. Oh, I got six. Got six. Right? Six is great. You want yeah. the highest one. Uh, yeah, that means you're in a controlled position when the action starts. So um, here we go. Um, it's uh, it's party night. It's uh, the you've you've probably been to the Spark Grounds before, here or there. It's a very flamboyant affair at times. Uh, Depending on the time uh, of the week, uh, there could be the the best of the best that are uh, performing here. Uh, but you know that in addition to to various locations, to various like set pieces uh, like the Spark Flyers, like the Strongmen, like the the side of Sideshow Alley in in, in particular. Um, but at a certain point, you all had to probably find a way to get your product here. Um, so we'll say you guys start up uh, in uh, you've, you've managed to to you're already into the party. You've already got your your weight staff unis on. Uh, you've got the little mask to try to fit in with the, the Venetian like theme of the evening. Uh, it started. It's early. People aren't too uh, drunk yet. You hear music and dancing. You hear people laughing left and right. All of these local carnival-like uh, performers are still here doing their work, but they're doing so in a way that is is probably even better than normal as they're getting higher and higher tips. They're getting paid better. So at a certain point, you all managed to kind of sneak off and through a a well-devised kind of crack in the wall that you that you knew about. You managed to lure some of your product in and store it in a, uh, in a, in a tent within the, the sideshow alley. And I'm going to say that you're here. You've got this whole mess load of product, but uh, that's hidden in one of these, these unused tents, these one of these unused carnival areas by the sideshow alley. And you've got it all stacked up and ready to go so that you can come back into here grab some move back out into the into the into the throng of people ready to kind of sell here and there to but hopefully specifically to Lord uh, Lord Burnsides so here you are picking up your first everyone picking up your kind of your first you know, your first uh, 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 piece of it when you hear the tent flap of your uh, of your your hidey place suddenly woof open as the sound of what, what sounds like brass instruments uh, begin to hurl inside from outside. And you can tell someone has just entered into this same hidden carnival tent that you're in. And when you peek out over some of these crates, you see what looks like a, a strange looking figure uh, that looks to have suffered some kind of like mutative effect. Uh, they have grown some kind of almost third limb like out of the side of one of their, their bodies. And you can see that they have slopped down into the, you know, against the tent in one corner, blocking the exit and are there. Uh, you think they're eating or drinking, but they definitely could see you coming in and out of a, of a place that's supposed to be unused and hidden and you're not supposed to be here. So how do you want to tackle this? Uh, Uma will look over to Oliver as kind of the chatty. He said he's muted, so I'm not sure if that's normal or not. 
for a sideshow alley, probably normal, yeah. Okay. There is some, you know, that that exposure perhaps to certain like you know, you know electroplasmic uh, concoctions or to strange rituals or just maybe somebody who is born out in the Deathlands and brought inside uh, the Lightning Walls, something like that. One of those probably is likely what we're looking at. Um, not necessarily anything of like the devilish or demonish variety, but just somebody who has kind of suffered uh, suffered uh, some kind of mutative effect uh, at, at a certain point in their existence. But they're here they are. They haven't noticed you. You're in a, you know, oh. They haven't noticed you. They're just there blocking... Like any way, if you were to try to leave through the flap with this stuff, they they would see you, and then your hiding place would suddenly be revealed. <laughs> Beowulf says, "Quick, summon the Leviathan." <laughs> that, no, take him off. not this early. Okay. Step A, notice trouble. Step B, summon Leviathan to take care of trouble. Step B, <laughs> okay. summon some ghosts. <laughs> So there's just no. a person. There's just a person here. They look a little strange. Uh, what would you, you like to do to try to? Away. Yeah, and like you know that if you suddenly start wandering out from here, they're gonna know that you're in here, and that could potentially make them start getting curious about what's back here, what you have hidden under these tarps in the back of this tent. Oof. So, hmm. I'll look at the others and see if they have a way of like making this guy unconscious at all. Oh, do you have any stuff, Uma? Define stuff. Drugs, like we have drugs, obviously. Oh yeah, did we didn't define any... our loadouts. Did you all to, did you all take any specifically noteworthy loadouts? Uh, that's, I always forget about loadout stuff. I... Um, remember that you pick like from one of the tiers. You don't like actually stuff. pick your whole loadout. You just pick like how heavy of a loadout you're carrying. Drug kicks, cupcakes. Can I got any <laughs> can I put it in with you? Uh, da, 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 da. where did I put it? Well, loadout choices again. You can have light, uh, basically like my light, medium, heavy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, take a look. If you take a look at your, at your um, character sheet, uh, look on the loadout. Oh, tab. I did load it up. Okay, cool. You don't have to. You don't have to load it up ahead of time. You don't have to say what you're carrying. You just have to pick light, normal, or heavy, and then you kind of add stuff to the list as you go, and that ticks the boxes. So you don't have to define exactly what you have. You just have to define your loadout. I have a normal one. Okay. How's yeah. the light? Did I? Okay. All right. So you're also trying to be undercover a bit. So uh, the normal loadout might might reveal little bits and pieces. It's good that none of you picked heavy, probably. Uh, but we'll go. For, we'll move from there. So again, here you go. You've got this person just sitting there eating away in front of you. How are we tackling this? So they're not a worker, right? They are a sideshow freak, yeah. basically. So do we knock them out? Do we bribe them? Yeah, do we just act like we... like? I don't have a ton of uh, dots in it, but like I was just gonna go with command, just like because we we are in the uniform, we look like we work here. Security is supposed to be very tight here, um, and so kind of just try to strong arm him out of the tent. Like you're not supposed to be here. This is a private okay. event. Um, you can take the food that you got, but you need to go elsewhere. Okay. That's what we're doing. Uh, so Uma, you step out from behind uh, your hiding place here. Uh, you, you conjure up your sternest voice and from behind the Venetian mask in your waiter like uniform, uh, you try to command. So now you are in a controlled position as a result of the engagement role. So your position is, uh, do, 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 do. yeah, control position. Um, effect I think is standard, uh, that you're, you can get them to go away. Uh, so standard, standard, uh, standard controlled, um, don't forget, you can always to get more die. You can always push yourself or take a uh, take a devil's table's bargain. Somebody else could help you by taking one stress um, and give you an extra die. Uh, so, I'm actually gonna uh, like I'm gonna kind of wave Oliver over and just kind of gesture for him to like stand up because he is tall, and so maybe that can kind of help add to the yeah. I'll just her here. Be like, I'll hand him a complimentary drink on his way out. Like. Sorry for the inconvenience, but I shouldn't be here either. Okay. So you take a stress, and you're going to throw an extra die. I'll say the devil's bargain, if you want it, uh, is that um, 
they're going to do, I mean, obviously if you succeed, they'll do what you say, but, um, they're definitely going to be curious about, um, uh, about the 10. So like that, I'll, I'll probably end up saying that they, they might come back at some point, uh, to inquire when you're gone. That's if you want an extra die. Yeah, I mean, I... Or you can... Don't forget, you can push yourself. You can take two stress and push yourself. Well, and I don't have anything in command, so I'm rolling two and taking the lower. Well, you're taking an extra... You, you got a die from Cobb, so you're rolling one die. Okay, so I'm rolling from, one. From so Cobb, yeah. I feel like you I can... should definitely take the devil's bargain to get another one. Or you can take two stress and push yourself to get a die. Yeah. I'll take two stress. Okay. You got two dice. You're rolling from controlled and uh, controlled position, standard effect. Go for it. Oh, goodness. Okay. So you can press on by being risky. So as you step, step from behind, uh, <laughs> stress now means more pudding later uh yes, you step out from behind uh you you uh, you get your shoulders back uh uma is somewhat plump i believe uh, is, yes. is yep. canon mm -hmm. and uh you you like what are you doing here you're not supposed to be here and, and this this creature like looks up <clears throat> sort of a golem like looking eyes that kind of glow a bit in the dark this this third vestigial arm just kind of kicks off to the side doesn't seem to be functional but they have it nonetheless and they look up at you and they're like, and they just say, nah, this is, this is my place for food. Leave me be. Uh, Oliver, you try to, to stand up and, and kind of show a, a, you know, a little bit of your height and then kind of reach down to offer the drink. Ah, I don't want any of that. I don't like that. Go away. What are you doing? And so you can see that they, they, they just reject your advances. Um, now you can press on by seizing a risky opportunity, which means you just kind of roll again with a slightly different approach. Um, and, uh, uh, or sorry, you can press on by seizing a risky opportunity or you can withdraw and try a different approach meaning you can do something else or you can try to roll again, except this time at risky using your command tactics or you can take a different, op you know, a different tactic here. Because I'm, I'm not rolling many dice, um, should we withdraw and try a different approach? Maybe yeah. we try the bonk upside the head approach. Okay. Who's going to do the bonking? Yeah, who has any prowess? Um, what is that, skirmish? Or red? Remember, you guys determine what you roll. Just That's always true. Pretty, you guys determine what you really just tell me what yeah. you're doing. Um, so while they're doing this nonsense and they're trying to command this guy to go, obviously okay. it's not going super great. Um, Sethla just kind of grabs like my serving tray and I come up behind him and I'm just gonna thwack him across the back of the head. Okay. That uh what do you look in the roll? Uh skirmish. Okay, skirmish is fine. I think skirmish makes sense. Uh, in this particular situation, I'm going to say that the effect is potentially great and that you might just knock them cold, knock them out. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm also going to say that this is uh, this is risky for sure. Uh, I would put it at desperate, but that there, he's kind of distracted by the other two. But we'll say great, potentially great effect if you manage to get like a really good hit off here. Uh, so um, I'll say that the, you know, the... Um, the devil's bargain um, is that, that if you wanted to take it, uh, we could say the devil's bargain is just going to be uh, increased heat in this case because somebody got assaulted. Uh, somebody in the carnival staff got assaulted. And so later on that could come up and come into play. So it would just no. be plus two heat. I know us. Uh, that's okay. already dangerous. <laughs> okay. Okay. If, you're, if uh, your goal is not to accrue heat, I think no. you're playing the wrong game. <laughs> it's going to happen one way or the gonna other. We're going to get heat. I just don't want another tenor off the gate. Okay. All right. So then you could push yourself, take two stress to get an extra die. Somebody else could potentially help you. Uh, um, I do have two in skirmish. 
So I'm just I'm. You just saw how good it. it was rolling two die right there by Melissa. <laughs> I believe in the heart of the cards. Okay. Partial success. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think what's going to happen is is re- obviously reduced effect. First of all, you're not going to knock him out. Uh, okay. So, um, so I think that's pretty much the only consequence here is that uh, like I think that makes sense. Is you're gonna you're gonna scare this this individual, and they're like ah ah no stop hitting why? And you're gonna see they're gonna scamper out of the tent at this point and just run away, leaving like whatever kind of small piece of eel that they were devouring in their in their little shadow here uh and they go they go running back out into sideshow alley somewhere uh without having seen what you have hidden within here okay okay but they chase they run out into the they run out into the into this in sideshow alley so you get your you go ahead and you get your um your stuff all packed up, like whatever it is. Maybe you all are kind of carrying like, you know, little like fanny packs of some kind and you're, you're carrying some product in. And you know that on the one hand, you can just try to sell to individuals and, and whatnot. But the big score, the big hit would be to try to get directly to uh, the Lord themselves, who, who the noble, because you know that they are specifically the type of individual that wants to, to take these trips. And that could be a, a person who has enough, has enough coin to possibly buy it all right off you uh, and not have to worry about doing this other little stuff here and there. So you dip out into the night, into the uh, the carnival, uh, and you look around, um, and you're not quite sure uh, where he's at uh, currently, but you do see that there is a fairly large crowd that has been growing uh, by the the towers uh, where the spark, uh, the spark flyers are, are due to perform tonight. Um, when you wander over there, uh, you can certainly see that um, there is a fairly large crowd uh, of at least maybe two to three dozen people, uh, all roughly college age, like young 20s or something like that, late teens, and they're partying and they're drunken. And you can see finally, you target like the specific Lord himself. Uh, you can see Errol Burnside's. But as you're looking around, you see that he has private security that seem to be uh, that seem to be flanking him and kind of keeping him out. So anytime anybody kind of comes up, like you could see somebody reaches out. So how do you try to get close and converse with the Lord uh, Lord Burnside's here without drawing the ire of his private security? So, so like, had, go ahead. Even just approaching uh, causes them to like just throw you away, basically. Just seems like anybody who gets within a specific radius, like, is getting like kind of accosted by like what looks like a, a kind of a middle-aged man with a big bushy beard, uh, is dressed in finery that you think doesn't actually quite fit them, or they're not used to that type of clothing. You would guess they're just private security. It's not uncommon, especially mm-hmm. if they're leaving their district and going to a place like this that isn't within their kind of controlled environment. Likely, it's just it's just mercs of some kind. Yeah. Got it. What were you saying, Melissa? So, uh, so my idea was that um, I wanted to try to... Um, do like a like a juggling kind of a thing where like there's like audience interaction with it so like i'm trying to you know kind of do like a juggling and then like oh you know here you're the man of the party and you know kind of giving him balls to kind of add in to kind of the juggling that i'm doing so that like within one of those maybe i can kind of sneak in um i don't know if i could do um like, could I do a flashback to me, like, practicing that with my brother, maybe, to get, like, an extra? Okay. You want to do a flashback? Uh, and so we say, like, uh, within the last couple of days, you spent some time uh, working with your uh, your brother, who, we, as we know, is part of the fam. Yep, Let's Buka. see if you can work on... What was his name again? Buka. Okay. And you're trying to figure out, uh, basically... I would say this is probably going to be 
this is a s complex in the sense that like it's going to take some practice and skill uh so i would say probably one stress to go back because like you have you have decent opportunity to do so it's just the complexity of trying to get not just normal juggling, but kind of complex juggling to try to incorporate other people with it. It's probably mm -hmm. gonna take a little time. So we'll say we'll say one stress if mm -hmm. you're willing to pay that. Yep. Okay. So you uh you have this uh this down. You have the ability to to do this down. So this isn't a question so when you when you do your next roll, it's not gonna be a question of are you capable of doing it? It's a question of whether or not it's enough to kind of entice the this Lord Burnside person to uh, to your interest. So, um, how flamboyant or how how fascinating it is. So, so what is it you do? Um, and so I I want to see if um, either Sethla or Oliver or both can kind of try to be like my like kind of hype people, um, so that like I can kind of be doing this and they're like you know, kind of Carnival Barker. You know, anybody want to, you know, maybe, um, you know, that it's participatory and like, I'm doing a really good job. Okay. Okay. Uh, so are we saying this is like, you want them to do like a setup action? Is that what we're talking about here? Like you want to get them into the position where they're doing something to, to set yeah. you up for this? Yeah. Okay. So, so maybe like they can be like, they can be like the, the participatory person yeah. and then I can, you know kind of try to get him into it okay so when you perform a setup action you have an indirect effect on the obstacle and this is the case like you're trying to get the attention of the noble so that the noble maybe initiates contact with you as opposed to you trying to do it and maybe by the noble initiating contact that'll supersede this issue with the uh with the security the okay yeah um so if your action has the its intended result, any member of the team who follows through on your maneuver gets plus one effect level or an improved position for their role. So who is trying to help out Uma here and trying to like call out to the crowd about her, her, uh, I mean, you said you said that they're trying to like hype you up. Is that what you're looking for? I'll be like her Vanna White assistant in the beginning and be like, <laughs> okay. here she is. And then okay. like, I'll toss like the first couple in and then I'll look around and try and call somebody like, do you want to try kind of thing? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what do you want to roll? Ashley. Oh, I'm rolling. Okay. Um, yeah, it's an action. It's a setup action. I would action. say command because I'm like picking people out of the crowd and be like, would you like to play? Come on over. Like, Hey, get over okay. here, bud. And they come over, and then they have like a little exchange. Do, 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 do. Okay, all right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, you got your. So you've got command. You can take uh, some stress if you want to get an extra die. Um, I'll say. I'll say devil's bargain. One of these people that you pull over uh, is really, really, really impressed to the point where they kind of start to follow you around, maybe. Uh, and like want you to do more tricks and things like that. I'll take it. Okay, so yeah, go. So you've got a follower. So that's your extra. That's your extra die. Uh, risky standard. Uh, this one I think is. I think this one's got standard effect. Um, I I would say this is probably a f probably just risky. I don't think it's controlled necessarily, but I don't think okay. it's desperate. So risky risky standard. Okay. Another partial success. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so basically, I know that's what I'm saying. Only rolling two die is it's mm -hmm. like you might succeed, but you're not getting full successes. You're not getting critical successes. More die is better. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So I feel like the complication seems pretty clear uh, in this particular case. Is that you're you kind of lure in a person who certainly uh is is interested as they come like the, you kind of throw the balls at you you know and like they kind of exchange and they kind of do like a little bit of the juggling with you and they're like oh well done this is uh, absolutely wonderful the agility the dexterity the concentration absolutely absolutely lovely um but uh i'm gonna say what the complication is gonna be is that um 
in this case, maybe more, maybe this person is so, uh, so enamored with him, with you, that they start bringing in some of their, uh, uh, Henry, friend, come here, come here. And so two people now are kind of following you. You've, you've accrued two fans who are kind of cramping your style now as they're getting in your way and they're trying to like, oh, oh, show us, show us more. Show us different tricks behind the back, perhaps. Oh, four balls, five. Could you do six balls at once in the air? Um, those types of things. You can tell these people are, have, are a little bit into their cups as well. So you've got okay. two followers that are kind of drawing a, drawing attention to you right now, which on the one hand is helpful here, but could be less helpful in the future. Okay. All right. So uh, you can go ahead and take your plus one uh, on the roll for this. It's a setup action for Uma. So if we go back to Uma, who's going to try to take the momentum of this little moment and kind of push it forward onto uh, Lord Burnside's here. Um, so what are you doing then, Uma? Describe your your so action here. I was going to go with a finesse roll. So kind of making sure that this works successfully, um, you know, kind of getting him to... Uh, kind of want to engage and um you know being able to maneuver you know kind of the sleight of hand that's going to go with that i'm sorry so say it, to, explain it again uh basically like th this is i was thinking a finesse test because it's the sleight of hand that like sure. the setup action was trying to get his attention to get him in but oh, now yeah. i need to do sleight of hand to make sure that like when he he's got kind of ball, the ball to throw in it's the ball and you know like a small packet okay so I'm going to say this is going to be risky. Oh, excuse me. This is going to be um, standard. Of, sorry. It's going to be risky because there's still the mercenary folks around. Uh, but I'm going to say this has a potential to have great effect between your uh, between your little entourage here, which is sort of actually having the benefit of hyping you up a little bit extra because there's other people that are interested, and the flashback sequence where you had with your brother. So you're, you're, you're fairly good. So I'm going to say risky but with great effect. Uh, it still could piss off some of these some of these people that are serving as bodyguards. Okay, so do I get any plus dice for this? Uh, you get plus one from Sethless setup action. Okay. Um, all right. And then would I get any benefit of doing desperate position instead? Yeah, if you want to drop down to desperate, you can gain one XP. Uh, and that's for increased effect. Uh, so trading position for effect. You're already at great at effect. Great, so it's not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. I'll just leave it where it was then. Okay. Okay. Roll in two dice, see what happens. Uh, so don't forget, you can still push yourself for stress. You can still ask Long, you know, as Oliver, he could still potentially help you with one stress. You can ask for a devil's bargain. We could do that too. Go through the whole song and dance. Um... <laughs> Agreed. pretty stressed um yeah could oliver help uh yeah i could try and lend some aid here all right describe how you're helping let's see so you've got this crazy wild like multi-person juggling routine that has now started to happen between uma and these two other random fraternity followers You've got Seth, Sethla, who is like calling out people and getting others to kind of come in and occasionally like catch a catch one of these juggling glowing balls and then kind of tosses them back. And then the others kind of they, they drift, they come in and out, but the two just kind of continue to stay there and they're laughing and delightful and incredibly drunk. And you're still just trying to draw the attention of this this no this young noble lord over here. So what is it that Oliver is doing to try to help with this? I think I'll just start. It's like narrating or pretty much going, look how many balls she can juggle. Can, can no one stop her act? Can no one stop this fiend? If, keep adding to the pile and see how many she can do. Okay. That's sort of, I love it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Deal. Okay. Uh, okay, so you got your plus one die from uh, from Oliver. You got your plus one from the setup action. Uh, and then whatever you've got, your skills. Uh, if you want a, uh, do you want a devil's bargain in this particular case? Uh, I think we've racked up a few of those already. I'm going to roll three dice and hopefully. Okay. All right, go for it. Oh no, partial success. All right. Uh, so I think in this case, uh, I think we're just going to say it has reduced effect. Um, 
we'll say that you're in this case the Lord Burnside's very briefly comes over, gets involved. Here's Oliver's uh, shouting. Uh, Sethla, you point to him at one point. He comes over and he can see he's got a smile on his face. He's got this like half, like kind of Phantom in the Opera mask on. And you can see he's got this drunken f- smile. He's got these big dark rings over the eye that's showing. And uh, he, he, he goes, right here, right here, right here. And you, you kind of toss it in his direction. Um, but before the ball actually gets to him, you can see this big meaty hand from the uh, from the figure that's standing next to him just grabs it and just throws it back at Uma, uh, and doesn't like push you away, doesn't do anything. And but you can see like there's a little bit of a crestfallen look on uh, on the. It was like, oh, was that was that, was that really necessary? He's just tossing it to me, not to you. Absolutely ridiculous. And at that point. Um, uh, he's just like, well, good show nonetheless. Very wonderful. We're certainly getting our money's worth. Uh, uh, even within the crowd here, even you small little performers, not even the, the great wonderful performers up on the tall tower uh, are, are getting our money. But even you, these small people, very well done. Very well done. Jolly oh. Um, and just sort of like flips a coin or something in your direction as tip and then uh, turns back, turns his attention back up to the SI. So you get, you, you, you draw on his attention as being like skilled performers of some kind, but didn't quite lure him toward you. Uh, so he's interested. He's interested. Well, Pope. Well, actually, no, that's not fair. Cause I did say that you, he would come over. This is what I'll say. Let me, let me, let me amend that. Cause I feel like I took away what your intentions were. He does start playing catch with you. Um, he does start, so he'll, he'll play catch, he'll play and every, but at a certain point, so like you basically, you have a limited amount of time to do something before the Merc comes over and grabs the ball and kind of pulls you away. So I'll, I'll, I'll say that, like you get his attention, he's there tossing, oh, wonderful, oh yes. And he's like fumbling with it cause he's not very good. And he tosses it back, oh, 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 two at once. Oh, goodness. Oh. <laughs> um, so you have a very limited, very limited chance to, to sort of convince him of something right now. Bob, this sounds like a you. <clears throat> right, so when he comes over, uh, do those feels. He must be having a wonderful night. Step. Oh, it's... I'll just introduce myself as well. Okay. I am all of. I'm all of it. Oh, that's wonderful. Whatever your name is, is this just wonderful? Oh, uh, three of us. Oh, cool. And he's like all fumbling. Oh, this is just delightful. I haven't sweat this much in my entire life. Uh, 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 what did you say your name was? Cornflower? Uh, what was it? <laughs> that's not important now, but it looks like you're having a wonderful evening. We can make it even more delightful if you wish. Well, whatever did you have in mind? Uh, so why don't we get into the role then? What is it you're trying to? Um, what is it you're trying to use? What do you want to use here? Uh, just gonna sort, just be like friendly. Okay. Just offering him a good time. Okay. Um, you wanna push yourself? Take some extra, just take an extra die here. Yeah, I'll even like just put it around the table, even. Just like out in the open. Yeah, don't worry about that. Just, just, just like I'm just talking about mechanically. Do you to get to get your dice pool together? Do you wanna take two stress to get an extra die? Do you want oh. to, yeah. I'll take a stress to assist. Okay. And like when he's like, "Are you here for a good time?" and like that's when I kind of like sashay up and I like move one of my silks aside and I like show some of the like product, and then I like mm. cover it back up. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, so you got an extra die from uh, Sethla. Do you want to push yourself, yeah, Oliver? I'm push you... myself here. For this... So two yeah, extra die there. Um, all right, uh, go ahead and roll it. You got your plus two plus whatever you've got for your dots for your action. What's it gonna be here? It's gonna be. You said consort, right? So what's your? Yeah, what do you have in consort? Effect was I have one. Oh, uh, I'll say with um, with with you both saying that you're just putting it right out there. This has the potential to be great effect because you're very you're very aware of like like this could be like gold, and he's he's super interested. But I am gonna say that the um. I am still going to keep it at risky though, because there are these these mercs nearby still. So, okay. I'm say great effect, but still risky position. At a partial success. Okay. 
Um, All right. Oh. Well, if you're giving out free samples, don't mind if I do. Reaches like right inside like Sethless coat and just kind of plucks a bit. Um, and just, it's like a s small little pouch of what looks like dream powder. And kind of looking around, just kind of opens it up and just... <laughs> It starts like getting all tingly, and his eye is gonna grow uh, fairly large and wide. The whites become really uh, prominent. Pupils start to dilate. Oh, well, this is very wonderful product. Oh, oh, Henry, come here. They're, they're giving away free drugs over here. Um, I'm gonna say the complication, however, uh, is that. One of these mercs sees that you, uh, one of these guards sees this exchange, um, and they're now kind of going to kind of step over and in between the the Lord himself and Sethla, and is going to try to start kind of pushing me like, that's it, little girl, no more of that here. Got to go to keep this this young man fit as a fiddle. Off with you, off with you. Starts kind of shuffling you away, not like. Not to where he's like hurting you yet, but he's definitely like kind of pushing and manhandling you a little bit uh, as he's trying to push you out. Um, but he's sh he's kind of shoving Seth away while the Lord has turned around. And is like, ah, Henry, come, come, come here, come here. There's wonderful free samples of the most delightful. Ooh, is that a is that a Leviathan I see that seems to be coursing through? Oh, no, sorry, just a shadow. Oh, how <laughs> wonderful. Um, so now Setha is being kind of pushed and dragged away. So this is the new complication. Hey there, dragons in the dining room. How's it going? Uh, we are trying to sell drugs to a rich uh, noble who's having a private fraternity party at a carnival within the industrial city of Doskval. So that's what we're doing tonight. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> Uh, all right, so you you see, so you all see Setha getting dragged away. The noble is interested, but Setha's now getting dragged away, gotten in a little bit of trouble. Setha, you're getting dragged away. So, how do you want to tackle this? Um. Oh God. I. Uh, I can try to do it like a consort, and just try to. Um. Like, I want to see if I can get this to be sort of half-hearted on his part. Like, oh, you must deal with this all the time. You know, you probably know it's better to kind of keep him happy. And it's not your job to parent him, right? Like, kind of trying to make sure that he, this continues to be just sort of a half-hearted. Like, he's going to let us go or not. You okay. Know. You're going to try to consort with the, with the guard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is going to be limited effect. Uh, in in risky. Okay, can I? His specific it? job is to sort of keep this stuff away. Is is keep the the riffraff, keep the mm -hmm. keep the the noble from getting into too much trouble. Like this is literally his job. So just trying to talk him out of it might have a limited effect. Can I make it a desperate position? Yeah, you can trade. De you could trade position for effect. So you can make it a desperate position, which will move this up to standard effect. Uh, sure, no problem. Uh, so you're doing consort. Uh, do you want to push yourself? Do you want a devil's bargain? Um, yeah, I've only got three stress left before I have a trauma. So, uh, okay. It's a devil's bargain. Okay. The devil's I bargain. Well, I mean, that's, that's something different. Like those, you could do both. So, so oh, if you're yeah. looking to get, if you're looking to get the extra dive from like devil's bargain or personal stress, uh, what can we do for devil's bargain here? Um, I'm going to say that, uh, in the, in the attempt to kind of get him to, um, to calm down, no matter what, like he's going to sort of instinctively as you're you know, kind of sneaking up to say something to him, which is like, oh, no, maybe you even put a hand on your shoulder. He's just going to wail around like like with an instinctive defensive posture, and you're going to take like a level one harm. Uh, a level, you know, okay. you're going to, he's like, he, he might he might sure. kind of knock you down to the ground. Something simple, not nothing, nothing like too terrible. Like bust your lip open or something? Yeah, like you're going to, you're going to, that, that'll be okay. like, so positive or negative, no matter what, you're going to end up taking taking a hit from this. Okay. All right. And the um, 
I said I could assist if you need it. Uh, yeah, I, I just have one in consort, so. Okay. Uh, and like by assisting, I'm like, if that's all I had, that's all I had. Sorry, and, you know. Okay. Uh, so you're doing this at uh, risky, uh, or excuse me, at desperate standard. Desperate standard. Uh, you got your two extra die from the Devil's Bargain and from Sethla. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Partial success. God damn okay. it. <laughs> Uh, I think the con I think in here the um, what we'll say is that we're gonna we'll, we can up we'll upgrade the harm um, from something that's like level one simple and we'll make it like level two where it's like a like a sprint like you know something like a like a like a fracture like a fracture in your wrist or something as you fall to the ground as opposed to just taking wind winded so we'll say a level two harm as opposed to a level one. Okay. Um, as he kind of w wheels on you and probably doesn't know his own strength, and despite uh, you know, despite your attempts to kind of calm him down, he just it's just it's just his nature, and you go sprawling down into a couple people. You stumble uh, and you try to just brace yourself as you land. And okay, wait, let me get your ankle. And your ankle, you just hear a crack as your ankle uh, suffers a small fracture. Uh, so yeah, just put like fractured fractured bone, fractured ankle. Uh, yeah, you can resist that if you want. Oh, how do I do that? Uh, so you can say you do it, uh, and then you roll a die. You subtract it from you subtract what you roll uh, from six. Well, in this case, you would roll. It's this is a prowess. So you'd roll your number of dice that you have in prowess. You take the best die and you subtract it from six, and that's how much stress you would have to take for it. You have to decide to do it. Do you want to do it? Because you're going to take stress if you, oh, if you oh do no, it. Oh, no, sorry. That's why I, was, I only have yeah. three stress slots. Okay, so you don't want it. So you're going to take the arm. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. So you've got our fractured ankle now. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, okay. But nonetheless, he kind of wheels on. He's like, okay. All right, fine. Very sorry, miss. And he even reaches down to kind of help you up. Uh, but it's here. I don't want to say either one of you peddling your your wares around the Lord. Lord Burnside is, is not to be bothered by this sort of street level terrible who who's to say what you've mixed in on this thing? But he is he you've you've managed to keep Cephla from kinda of getting thrown out at that point. Okay. Oliver, um it's at this point, um with the two of them kind of pushed off and you can see that like they're kind of out of the way uh, like you, they've been drawn away the uh, the Lord himself has kind of turned his attention at this point because he's his friends have come oh well where did they go oh oh well never mind uh, wonderful things and he's kind of looking up towards this uh, towards the, the tower and everyone's just kind of watching as the spark flyers are kind of swinging back and forth it's at this point, uh, Oliver, that you feel uh, a, something sharp uh, in the back uh, of your of your shirt, and you hear uh, a familiar voice just kind of whisper into your ear. Well, hello, old friend. Fancy meeting you here. And you recognize the voice of Brill, uh, a former partner of yours and fellow. Uh, fellow drug dealer, a uh, fellow vice dealer, who says, Ah, I guess you didn't hear the news. This here is our territory. The territory you could have been part of had you not gone running away. So I would appreciate if you about face and get the fuck off my grounds. I you recognize know, the voice entirely. You totally yeah, recognize sure. the voice. I didn't come for trouble. Save your tools for the kitchen. Okay. How are you tackling this? So how do you want to tackle this? He's got a knife in your back and he's telling you to leave. This is his territory. Hmm. I don't know if I could sort with a rival. That doesn't sound right. You can. Maybe. It's just what it just. It's just when I set position and effect that it's. Uh, that's when I'll do it. So if you want to use consort, just say you want to use consort. I'll tell you what it would be, and then you can decide if you want to do something else instead. Now summon the Leviathan. So. I'm gonna try to sway him here. 
Okay. Be like, Sway. Um, you know, we're just just trying to catch a little interest. Maybe I can share you some of our lots and just give us the opportunity. Okay. Um, all right. I'll say this is going to be. This is going to. We'll, we'll treat this as like risky limited because he's your rival and he hates you. Um, okay. So risky limited. So it still gives you potential to like trade position for effect if you want to get a better, uh, better effect here. But just sort of trying to sway him. And I'll say you've already kind of presented it. Devil's bargain. You give up. You give up a, a portion of. Uh, you give up like a coin uh, of your uh, of your scores, and you you give it to him. Like you just give him kind of a little bit of a tribute, basically. And that's that's the devil's bargain. So whether or not this is successful. You have to essentially pay over like a little bit of a tithe to him just because you were caught operating here. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'll take the bargain. Okay. There you take the bargain, so you're giving up one coin uh when we do the payoff. All right. Risky limited huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. And don't forget you can trade position for effect. You can so you can drop this down, you drop your, your position down to desperate, which would give you an XP, by the way, and then that would move the effect up to standard. It just means that there's a potentially bigger consequence if you were to fail. I'm gonna make it desperate then, right? Okay, so you, away, huh? yeah, so you make it down to desperate, which will now move the effect of the roll up to standard. So it's now it's now standard desperate. You've got a plus one die from the devil's bargain. You can still push your. You could still. Um, no, you can't push yourself. And we've already said that the two of them are away, so they can't really right. help you in this in this situation. So I'll take the two extra dice here, right? You take one extra die from a Devil's Bargain. Oh, just one. Mm -hmm. And then whatever you have in Sway. All right. Here we go. Oh, oh. God. Oh, God. <laughs> ah. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I think what's going to happen here is pretty obvious. There's a knife in your back, and now there's really a knife in your back. <laughs> As he's like, oh, no. sorry, I'll jump. And he just, you feel the knife just dip right. And you're like, oh, right into your back. Uh, as you're going to say, uh, this is going to be, this is a desperate action. So we're going to say this is, Do you have this, is gonna, to resist? this is a severe harm. Um, yeah, this is going to be like a level yeah, three I'm, harm. I'm going to resist. It's level three harm. Uh, okay. I'm going to say, though, when you resist, though, all it's going to do, it's going to reduce the harm. You're still getting stabbed. Yeah, it's fine. just not going to be level three. We'll, yeah. we'll kick it down to we'll kick it down to level two. OK, so uh, so I think in this case, it's 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 physical. So I would say I think it's prowess. But if you think it's something else, I'm, I'm happy to listen. I think it's I think it's physical because the physicals you're getting stabbed. Yeah, so it feels fine. like it should be prowess. But if you think. It's something else. I'll listen. I mean, it's your call. Yeah, I, I always see it's visible. It's fine. Okay. Well. All right, go ahead and roll it. Okay, so you're going to suffer three stress and a level two harm as it's going to miss, uh, a, like, it's going to miss, like, a vital organ. Which is what he was going to hit you, and it's like a vital. He's going to get you, basically stab you in the kidneys or something like that. But and he thinks he might have, and so not only that, he's just going to be like, "Night, night, out, chum," stabs you. You fall to the ground, and in amidst this crowd, that's everyone's looking up at this at the spark flyers. So they're tossing, so no one even sees this happen. He's going to reach down and just wipe it off right on your right on your your suit, right on your chest, and he's going to be like. Very deftly put the knife back into his own coat, and then he's going to disappear into the crowd at that point as you're bleeding out with this level two harm. Um, okay. That also puts my stress at limit. You're at limit? Okay. Yeah. Oh. That means you are out of the score, uh, in fact. Um, uh. Sethla and Uma, uh, as you've been dealing with this mercenary, uh, this mercenary guard, you look back and you can see uh, that that there's a figure that just sort of is running off and disappears into the crowd. Uh, but you look on the ground, and there's your your pal. You recognize him. Maybe his his mask is slightly askance. But you see Oliver laying on the ground. You see blood beginning to pool. 
uh, and their figure just ran away and darted into the crowd. Um, meanwhile, the Lord is uh, is up there, just is, is still kind of just staring up one of the guards next to them. And you can see that every now and then you can overhear, like, oh, this was wonderful dream powder, whatever this was. Oh, very, very good. Um, yeah. So I'll say, like, you still have your task in front of you. Uh, the other guard who just kind of ushered you guys away from the Lord is beginning to retreat back. Uh, it looks like some of this, like, the carnival folk are just now noticing what happened to Oliver and are, are kind of tending to it. So you can see that there's some other people in the area that are kind of tending to him. So for all like intents and purposes, like he's being dealt with, um, like people are attending to him cause he's bleeding out on the ground and he's in a uniform. So he's supposed to be there, but you still have your target. What would you two of you like to do? Um, Mm. Got him. <laughs> Come on. This is not Oliver good. Kebab. Remember when I was just like, you guys will find out later? Like, I, yeah, oh, yeah. That was we one did. of those. That we was did. one yep. of them. That and he one, came with a knife and yeah. stabbed our friend. Yep. Uh, I don't know. Specifically, like, I put it I put in my notes. I'm like, if there's ever a chance to get Oliver by himself. <laughs> and like, oh, I love this. Stab him. Perfect. I didn't even freaking do this myself. You all just did it. It's great. Oh, this game's awesome. Uh, what do you guys want to do? So I have a ghost key. Okay. So like it describes that as uh, an arcane device that can open ghost doors. There's an echo of the entire city across the ages trapped in the ghost field. Sometimes a door to that place can be found. Okay. Um, so, how does that apply in this current situation? <laughs> I'm thinking I could potentially, uh, <laughs> maybe not here. I was thinking like I could try and use the ghost doors to get even closer to him, like out of okay. view. Uh, well, I mean, right now he's amongst the throng of people who are watching. Uh, later, the spark like if, flyers go. Up. Okay. Okay. If, like later in the evening, like if he moves, like we'll kind of keep along the fringes, sell to other people as we go until like there's a chance where we can potentially get him like okay, isolated. Well, well I want to know what you want to do now, though. But I was thinking we we'll could cross do that now. bridge if we come to it. Um, I was thinking survey. He loves your product, by the way. He absolutely loves your product. So it's not a question of him. It's a question of, his, it's not it's not him that's the obstacle. It's his guards that are the obstacle. Yeah, I want to do a survey because like, I'm going to assume that there's going to be someone who appears to be sort of like best bro status that probably does not have oh, the it's, same. It's Henry. It's Very Henry. Clearly. It's yeah, Henry. And isn't Henry and he, he a was one of the fan? He, he really enjoyed your juggling as well, yeah. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, finding somebody that definitely has the ear but doesn't have the guards around them would be the person maybe that we should try to... Oh, yeah, he would... Yeah, for sure, it's Henry. Not only that, but he, he loved your juggling, Uma, so okay. that should So I don't even need to do the survey. Like, I already know that yeah. information. Uh, yeah, you already have... I would say you already have the information. Like, And he's even kind of lingering near you, and he's like, can we juggle some more? <laughs> he's just kind of as you get up, your ankle busted and broken. And he's just like, it's oh. all juggling. Um, so I, maybe I'll switch to consort as okay. my tactic with Henry to see if I can, um, yeah, just try to like, do some. You know what would make this even better? My juggling is if you had some if you bought some dream powder from me you know and maybe we can kind of say like you know i mean it was his party so you know sure and your friend really and whatnot, liked it did he, he want to buy really some like it yeah mm -hmm. are you are you aiming high enough with this i think you could probably aim higher with this you've got his best friend who has uh -huh. his ear mm -hmm. he can get close to him yeah. Are you are, are you maybe thinking? I think I think you're Does you're selling yourself short. Well, no. I think it's I th I think 
if anybody can lure can lure Lord Burnsides away, who who better than his best friend to get to get the Lord alone? Oh. That's all that's what I I mean, like I think I mean like sure, like everything you're saying, absolutely you can do, but I think you might even be able to do more with this. Okay, because I was thinking if we talk to him, then he can talk to the guards and the guards aren't gonna bat an eye at him, and then he can make the sales pitch for us. I th- no, I think we should try and use him like and and lure him alone into like maybe where all our product is and then be like, hey, so do you you're thinking the guards know the, the best friend. So the guards would let him go off with his best friend because they know him. I got it. I don't even know about that. Like there's just a good chance where he'll be like, hey, you should come with me. And then we'll have a very small clock window before the guards arrive. But we could attempt it. What do you think? So I think it's still consort. I think we're still trying to butter him up and talk him into setting up this uh, this meeting okay. for us. So you want to try to get, you're trying to convince him to set up a private meeting between Lauren Birdsides and yourselves. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to say that this is a... I'm going to put this at controlled in the sense that you've already earned his interest. Uh, he's he's one of the two people who were, were very enthralled. So I think carrying forward the success you had with your... Uh, so it's going to be a, at a controlled position. Uh, and I'll say that the effect is standard. Um, the effect is standard. Did you have any in consort, Irma? I've got one in consort. Okay, so could I do a setup action? Sure. What would you like? What are you thinking? I want to attune him. Um, Remember what we talked about when we were yes. through the, the week? The idea of using a tune as mind control. Where yeah, I don't understand that that the dangers in. of that are significant. Yeah. But I do, um, yeah, never mind then. Yeah, we were we were trying to hash out exactly the extent of the attuned skill. I don't think we've ever really mm-hmm. come to any kind of conclusion. We say you use it whatever the, whatever the hell you want, but like if it's just pure mind control, like to, a normal like, person. I was trying to like read through it again. I didn't yeah. want to do like mind control, but I did just kind of like cause him. Mm, I don't know if that would help. I have an idea of something that I could an item that i could use okay um item item can increase effect potentially like if, if you think so what do you got so what i'm thinking is that like i'll say that something that i have on me is like my brother was the one to teach me this and so i like i have some notes and so like i'll actually give him the notes so that like he could notes do on this on his own on the, oh, the, you you would you you'll promise to teach him how to do this uh, the juggling yeah. trick. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. And so like yeah. the item that I have is actually kind of like the the instructions of like how to do it and like the tips. Okay. Uh, I think. Okay, go ahead and mark that in your in your loadout. Uh, mm-hmm. Controlled. I think we're up to basically controlled situation with with potentially great effect here. And I think the great effect is likely going to be is that he'll run interference for the for the guards. You don't even have to worry about running for you. He'll do the interference for the guards. I think that's where great effect is right now. Uh, otherwise, he'll he'll get him. He'll lure him over. But uh, but we'll say the difference between standard and great effect is that you don't even have to deal with the guards at that point. He'll he'll just he'll he'll figure out some way to get. You know, he'll he'll decide how to take care of of keeping them out of like your your hidden stash tent. Okay, um, and then Seth, like, can you kind of just help me with the sales pitch, like the consort piece? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you take one point of stress, Seth. Uh, uh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's still um, two die because I've got one in consort plus one for the help. Okay, um, and I'm gonna say Devil's Bargain is basically just I I think Heat uh, is a good one in this case because like okay. you're putting yourself out there and uh, you're you're kind of 
describing your specific notes. This is this is like more like testimony that he could potentially give to somebody after the fact if they're trying to track down who was responsible for this. Uh, so okay. I think if you want a devil's bargain, you're just basically getting plus two heat for the for the score. Okay. Do you want it? I'd take it. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll roll. Yay! Yeah. We did it. That's God, a clean success. <laughs> It's a clean oh. success. Uh, yeah. And so you call him over and you show him some tricks. And he's like, you know, I would just absolutely be delighted if you could somehow uh, educate this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very brilliant, as you as you clearly uh, know, uh, from top of my class at Chart Hall. But I must say that the uh, hand-eye coordination has never quite been my forte. Uh, I much prefer... Uh, you know, engineering, science, math, that sort of thing. But I've never been what you might call a jock. Uh, so uh, if there's any any sort of uh, uh, any sort of advice you can provide me, I would be in your debt. Uh, uh, more than more than a handful of times, I've been teased for my inability to catch uh, well anything except a cold. Well, you'll actually be happy to know that the skill of catching and throwing. Is actually about geometry. So. <gasps> geometry? Well, you're speaking my language, you. I thought so. Wonderful, wonderful little person. Now, um, I I must say, uh, your uh, your product that you're seeming to be uh, peddling here, I am not above a small uh, snort here or there, uh, especially during exam week. <laughs> Anything I can keep myself up and going, up and going, up and going. Our chemical assistance is absolutely necessary once we're within this city, of course. I'll tell you what I'll do. There's a reward for your instruction. I will find a way to uh, law uh, his lordship uh, from his, uh, his guards. And I will tell you anything. I uh, don't even know these two very well. These are not his normal... Uh, body men either so uh, uh, but don't worry never you worry I shall determine myself Henry Henry who doesn't need a last name now so uh, where would you like me to lure him and um, I will name a place that I know to be um <laughs> trying to pull up the map real quick i'm gonna say well you you have don't forget that in sideshow alley have you tent. have your tent of your product um, oh yeah, yeah. unless yeah, you wanted to do something different yeah okay ah oh, yes yeah, uh, be... consider it done um once the show is completed uh i will have him over to you in a short period of time uh these uh goons however are hmm persistent uh very uh in curious they seem to be uh as uh as interested in uh the clientele as they are with uh with his lordship so i don't imagine you'll have much time to make your pitch so make a good one okay understood yes. thank you very much and he starts moving and back just kind of pull out the little piece of paper and just show him like uh, this will be wonderful. waiting excellent he's flipping through it and he starts leaning back and he looks over and like they're drag someone's dragging the body of oliver out of there oh god can you believe this this sort of thing every time we leave Jada, we have to deal with this sort of uh, this trash hopefully they just throw the body out into canals and be done with it uh chip chip and then kind of wanders off okay so, so we'll, um, we'll watch where Oliver is taken to so that we can gather our friend later. Yeah, so you see um, you see a group, and maybe it's like it's Veldrin uh, as part of it. And he kind of gives you, he looks over at you, uh, and he's in his, his finery. Uh, and he has a fairly upset face <laughs> on at the moment. Uh, but he, uh, he kind of gives you a look that suggests that Oliver's okay. But this might have this little scene, what you've done here, has not uh, has not necessarily gone over quite well. Uh, it's interfered a little bit with his plans. Okay, um, so we'll flash forward then, and uh, maybe 20, 30 minutes later, um, you're inside of the tent that you began your little adventure with. You've got your product, 
and you hear the sudden sounds of reverie as the tent flap opens, and in stumbles in a decidedly uh, high uh, Lord Burnside. Hello, someone here. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Are there drugs for sale? Vice paraphernalia. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Come to the right place. Oh, you're that juggling lady. Oh, how wonderful. Henry says that you have some sort of proposition for me. And I must say that this um, this wonderful oh, powder that you've given me is some of the finest. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what you've cut it with, but whatever it is, it's given me quite an appetite. Um, so how would you like to uh, to handle this negotiation knowing that you have a time limit here oh god how how do you sell drugs like my hope <laughs> was that uh, <laughs> actually, 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 actually. my hope was to kind of play upon like Dispensary. he thinks like this is the best thing that he's had okay and so like we want to make sure that his party and only his parties can have the best of the best. So like trying to play on like that, um, like he's entitled to the best and he wouldn't want anyone else selling this. And so he could okay. have, you know, kind of exclusive rights to everyone. Or, yeah. yeah. Just your lordship, your party is already so popping. Do you want to make it more so for your guests? Like, we've Don't got forget, by the way, the amount that you're selling isn't necessarily yeah. just for this party. party. It's the type of thing that could last a significant yeah. period of time. Yeah, like, he wants his parties to be the best parties for the whole next year, and this will okay. guarantee that no one okay. else will have the good okay. shit. Uh, who's making the role? <laughs> What's the role? And we can dig into this some more. Uh, I... Oh, shit. Like, I feel like... Lord Poppin' Parties. <laughs> Lord Poppin' Parties. Um, I just saw this. I mean, it's got to be... Like, it's... Ugh. I hate that it's Sway, because I don't have anything in Sway. I think you could argue consort. Because you're kind of buttering him up, you know? We care about his opinion. We want him to buy this stuff. Again, just tell me. Just tell me what you want to roll, and then, like, based upon what you run a roll, is where I give you yeah. effect and position. Sure. Like, okay. I don't have anything that has more than one in it, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, so, I, I think this is a this is a I'm gonna I'm gonna put this at risky simply because there's a time limit. Um, okay. not so much because of him, but because you know that there's only so much time before his guards will come come looking for him, and you know that they are not. Uh, I'm not particularly friendly willing people. to go desperate. Uh, so, uh, well, Beowulf makes a good point, uh, Melissa. You could potentially say Tinker if you uh, if you had done anything to the product in between, like if you did cut it with something, or if you you know purify it, anything, whatever it is. You flashback. Think you, could, you did. You could do a flashback and say you did absolutely. See, now we're talking. Here we go. Yeah, we did that shit. We cut yeah. that with ghost. So what we could do, why don't, I mean, we could do it this way. We could say we do a flashback um, as a setup action. Uma rolls that, and then Sethla rolls the rolls the current action. So, like, you're getting the benefit of the tinker. So you're not getting, like, a reduced position or effect. You're getting the setup action for the tinker in the flashback. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have consort and, or sway, Ashley? Nope, I do not. You have either one. Whoa, man. Um, just throwing out ideas. We don't none. Uh, none of that. What I said yeah. is necessary. If you want to still, you can roll consort sway. It's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea with Tinker, but yeah, I think well, the best we can would do give... is a consort. Well, if you Tinker set up, that's a plus one. And then, yeah, yes, <laughs> too bad definitely. or slide. The very person who would be perfect for this got stabbed in the back by an yeah. old, uh, an old rival. Exactly. Use that as a convincing point. Look how yeah. good our product is. Our friend here got stabbed in the backboard. 
So, I don't uh, know if that helps. <laughs> yeah. I mean, devil's bargain, I think, uh, what's going to happen here. I'm, I, I, I don't like going to the heat thing too often, but you guys are really putting yourselves out there with, we are. Um, you know, with the product here, just a direct sale, all this kind of stuff. I mean, I think this just kind of increases your heat because now you have a lord, like a you know a noble who specifically knows. Uh, we like, got the good, good. Yeah, so like that has the potential. It's not just uh, not just anybody, but a, a, a lord, lord, <laughs> lord Errol Burnside's. Devil's barking. Um, <laughs> Devil's barking. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's definitely going to be a complication. Uh, um, somebody, they do drop them in the canal. <laughs> Okay, so you consort or command or whatever you're thinking of doing, and then I will assist. Okay. Uh, take your. I do so think we should take the devil's bargain as well. For more heat. Yep. So okay. I think you should do it. Because you're selling all of it at once. Yeah. All right. Because remember, even though heat is stressful, doesn't that also give us more reputation? Uh, I don't remember. Kind well, of. I, I literally just go through the checklist at those types of points just because I have okay. only so yeah. much brain power. Until we left. get to the point that we're in jail because. Only one of you. Only one. You take the heat off. It's uh, great. Introduce new characters. Cobb got there's, stabbed. There's good all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get, let's get back to this. Get back to this. You're taking, so you got you get the stress from Seth. Uh, Seth just take, took plus one stress to give you an extra die. You're taking mm -hmm. the devil's yep. bargain of increasing potential heat. That's two extra dice. How, yep. how many dice do you have in, uh, you said consort? One. Okay, so you're rolling. You're basically rolling three dice. You're rolling this. Uh, so this is. Um, I'm still putting it risky. Uh, and I said I would be fine with des desperate. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's a standard effect, meaning it's just gonna be. Uh, you know, the potential great effect is that he gives you more than the stuff is worth, and so you maybe you get additional coin reward at the end. Is potential great effect. So you're gonna go desperate. Uh, you're gonna gain one XP. You're gonna move that up to great effect. Um, so you're rolling it great, desperate. Go for it. <laughs> Yay! Oh, success. thank God. Okay. <laughs> um. So you start going into this big ramble. You start talking about the product quality and all that kind of stuff. And, oh gosh! Oh, just, just shut up already, God! And he just pulls out this little coin purse from underneath his vest, and he just starts counting out coins. Just. I'll buy the ten in all. That's fine. Now, off with you. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have any um? Oh, oh, what's the word? Pipes or such things with you? No. Uh, yes. You don't do third-party products. Oh, God. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> yes, Just, I do. This is the product. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you're able to very yeah. He he he. You convince him. He buys the tent and he buys the product within it. Perfect. Uh, Sure. So he begins to start. To, so you see, as he, as he, as after he makes the the product, he he opens the flap up, and he calls out. He's like, "Henry, Henry, get the boys. We're going to have a little popping party in the sideshow alley." And then you hear uh, Henry, "Oh, d d oh, wonderful, wonderful, chip, chip, cheerio, something." And then they go. Uh, he's going to hunt them down. When the flap opens, you do notice uh, that the guards themselves are still uh, are kind of eyeing, and they're approaching the tent at this point. However, yep, getting out, getting out, going away. Okay. Um, Tugging at mm -hmm. Sessa's silks. Okay, so how do you want to get out from under the look of them? Like, what? It, so this is like this is like a an obstacle. Like, how do you want to try to slink away from them? Can we do my ghost door thing? Okay. Yeah, you brought it up. You wanted to do it. I really uh, wanted to do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So what was it again? An arcane device that can open ghost doors. There's an yeah. echo of the entire city across the ages trapped in the ghost field. Sometimes a door that can, to that place can be found. So we'd have to do like a search probably. Uh, well parking device that can open ghost doors so it's a door literally that i mean the way i'm reading it the way i'm looking at it it's like you're 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 it's almost like you're creating a door into like the ghost field and traveling mm -hmm. through it and then trying to pop out at a different place yeah that's exactly that what i want to cool? do mm -hmm. okay 
and we'll say there's uh, there's like a section of the tent in the back that you try to essentially use this on. You kind of rip a little tear in the tent and you in, in, insert the ghost key. Um, here's what I'm going to say. Uh, this is a desperate action. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think uh, 100% desperate action. Uh, I will say, however, that this will have a standard effect and that it can get you through there, but it's very, very desperate. Uh, and there's okay. the potential for this to go quite poorly. Um, cause physically pushing yourselves through this small section of the ghost field, uh, could potentially, uh, alert things to your presence. Could my fine spirit mask help me in this situation? Uh, well, what does that do? So it's my arcane item that allows the trained user to see supernatural energies in great detail. It also affords some measure of protection against ghostly possession only for okay. me. Um, each spirit mask is unique. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So like, I mean, it would be dangerous for Uma definitely to go through. Sure. I mean, for both of us, but. Uh, so yeah, I think this could be, I think what we're talking about maybe here is like a group action. Uh, yeah. maybe this is what it sounds like to me, uh, uh, where Sethla is leading in a tune action. Mm -hmm. Um, but Uma will have, have to roll it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll say with your items, we'll put it at, yeah, we'll put it at risky standard by using like this, you know, this, this extra thing. So your, your danger is potentially lessened somehow. Risky standard. Uh, it's going to okay. be a tune, however. And so I think, let me see if I can get this right here. Because I don't know if we ever did a a group action. I know we've done a setup action. Uh, did we do a group action last time? No, we um, didn't. No. All right, here we go. Because that's the whole thing where, like, the leader takes the right. negative. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a trauma, probably. Okay. Uh, not necessarily. Depends on how well people do. Uh, all right, so looking, for, I'm looking for it in the book really quick just to make sure we do it right since it's the first time we've done it. Example of 134. All right, so when you lead a group action, which is what Seth was doing, you coordinate multiple members of the team. Uh, so you describe how your character is leading the team in the coordinated effort. So are you barking orders, giving subtle hand signals, et cetera, et cetera. Then each PC who's involved, so in this case it's Uma, rolls an action roll using the same action. And did you decide on a tune? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it's going to be a tune. Uh, and then we count the single best result uh, as the overall effort uh, for everyone who rolled. However, the character leading the group action takes one stress for each PC that rolled a one to three as their best result. Oh, okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. Uh, and so the group action result covers everyone who rolled. Um, so... Um, so Uma, you got to roll in a tune at st uh, standard risky. Okay, I've got three stress left before I hit a trauma, so I'm thinking if I should take two of them to get an extra die, because otherwise I'm just rolling one. Go right ahead. Right. Um, I mean, if you want a devil's bargain, I got one for you. Perfect. What's that? As you travel through the ghost door into this little corridor. Something hitches a ride on you on your way out. Something small. Oh. I'll take it. Okay. Something will hitch a ride on you on your way out. Okay. Okay, so a tune. The tune of Corrigan. I roll as well, right, Jeff? Standard. Uh no. Okay. Everybody rolls, take the best roll? Um, no, I think it's I think when you're leading a group action, you're coordinating everybody else. Oh, so um, I'm just I'm just taking the stress upon myself if we get any stress. Yeah, okay. I think that's what it is. You're saying everyone rolls, so yeah, go ahead, both of you roll then. Okay, I got a success. But how many? Uh, okay, you don't have any, so you got a, a straight success. Okay, go I ahead and roll it success. as well, Ashley. I got a partial five five. Okay. So you're going to get uh, some sort of consequence or harm, some sort of complication. Um, you, all take right. the, you take the highest. So my... You take the highest. Yeah, you're fine. 
Right, so we... Oh, because it's a group mm-hmm. action. Gotcha. Yeah. So we took the highest one. I don't know if that's... That doesn't sound But then does she still take role. an effect because I rolled a one as part of my success? Or no, because I had a six as the highest. No, I think it's fine. I think this you take you count the single best result, which is a six, which is a success, and there's no harm, no consequence. There's just the devil's bargain of something comes through with you, something hitches yeah, a ride, yeah. uh, and that'll be something that we will. I'm gonna set a clock on. Okay. Um, all right. So, as uh, as the flap opens up, and you can see these two burly looking fellas coming in, including the bearded guy who broke. Uh, Uma's ankle by knocking her to the ground steps through um, and they see right as like right as you step through this kind of ghostly like fog cutout of the of the tent itself and as you go back there's almost like you're zipping up like a camping tent as it disappears you hear them like bark like just the one of them bark like we know who you are. And then that's the last thing you hear as like the tent kind of wraps up. And then you have this very peculiar moment, like when Frodo puts on the ring in Lord of the Rings, where everything just kind of turns this ghastly and ghostly, like white. The shapes of everything else is still here, but stuff is slightly out of, out of place. Uh, you see things are kind of echoing here and there with like this residue. You see there's people and ghosts that are moving about as well. You kind of try to, to walk as best as you can, hopping over obstacles, some of which are, are weren't there as as you maneuvered about the carnival during the you know during your your normal time. Eventually, you you find your way into a nearby building, and you put the ghost key into what looks like a door once more, turn the handle, and as you open it up, it opens up into what looks like kind of like a, a someone's a someone's apartment. Uh, someone who just lives there. You you see what looks like a bed, uh, like a little bedroll that's been set up nearby. There's a couple crates here and there that's been stacked up like a table. Fortunately, no one seems to be home at the moment. But you close the door behind you, and you have successfully extracted yourselves uh, from the tent uh, and have made off with your uh, with your specific sale. So has Seth ever done that before? Uh, that's probably the yeah. first time, maybe. Uh, yeah, probably the, mm, at least, maybe? yeah, maybe once. For for us, anyway, on screen, anyways, first time. On screen, first yeah. time. I'm just wondering if Uma would have <laughs> done this with... Nope, absolutely Seth not. Before. Nope. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Uma's going to be a little freaked out by that. That's fine. Uh, all right, so we'll say that successful score right successful and score is... everything's fine nobody no, got hurt not. in the process oh uh, God. okay so let's do happy birthday long here's a happy birthday back. long you're not allowed to play for the last Sad. half an hour <laughs> all right so let's hit the let's do the payoff thing again let's do these questions now so i don't forget uh and have to do them at the beginning uh so um all right. I'm trying to look for the questions. I always lose track. I really should put like uh, bookmarks everywhere. I need them. So payoff 146. Downtime. I got it. 146. Okay. So after score PCs, you take Scott take stock of their income from the operation. A successful score generates both rep and coin. So we can do this all together. Mm-hmm. Um, Crew earns two rep per score by default. If the target of the score is higher tier than you, take one rep. Um, if the target of the score is lower tier, you get minus one rep. Uh, in this particular case, uh, you're going to get... So let's do rep first. You're going to get plus two rep. All right, cool. uh, plus another two. So that's four total rep. So you get plus two rep by default, plus two rep from the tier differential. So you're up. That's plus four there. If somebody wants to pull up the character sheet for the two, crew. You, three, can, you can knock it in there. Got it. Uh, and that's simply because the, uh, the crew uh, whose two territory that was who Brill, uh, his gang, I'm putting them as a tier two gang. Uh, and so that's, that's who technically the target of the score was since it's their, it was their place. Um, let's see, uh, you earn coins based on the nature of the operation. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to say that that was, you didn't have a critical success, uh, on your, your final negotiation. You just had like a normal success. 
Uh, so I think, again, I'm going to make this a big score because he did uh, pay you. Okay. So that's going to be eight coin, but it's also minus one because you're paying off because uh, the deal. So we'll say he probably Brill probably stole it from Cobb. For we'll say like as after stabbing you, he reached down, kind of rummaged through your pockets, and because of that devil's bargain, uh, some of which you managed to sell maybe that night before you did the big the big score. So you've got seven coin coming to you. Um, I believe that is where we're at. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, okay, so then let's do heat. Um, I actually think this wasn't one. This one wasn't too crazy. Uh, definitely, I would say this one's probably more along the lines of contained standard exposure. Uh, so that's two heat. That's where I would put you guys in the sense that someone got stabbed, but no one got killed. Uh, mm -hmm. that's standard op. No one's dead. Then but then you had, and then you had two devil's bargains. Uh, so that's a total of six heat. If someone wants to punch that in as well. Okay. Uh, so plus one heat for a high profile or a well connected target. I do think I do think a nobles a nobles kid is going to get you a plus one there. So I changed my mind. Seven heat. Uh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. You're not an or. Coins we can do two each and one stash. One Sounds good. Okay, so that's payoff. Lord pooping parties, which is a totally different party. It's a completely different party, but still very, very, very interesting. Very, very nice. It just depends on what you do with the poop. Do you put the poop? No. Nope. No. No. Never mind. Uh, okay, so how are you guys looking for your heat and your rep right now? Where are we at? Where are okay, we so for rep, we're two away from filling up the bar, or the whole thing. Beautiful. Um, we are one heat away from getting our second wanted level. Oh, oh no. shit. <laughs> That's bad. Yep. Oh, it's great. You guys are awesome. You guys are just like, you're throwing, throwing haymakers out there. This is great. Uh, crew XP at the end of each session for each item below, mark one XP. Uh, so you mark two XP for that you make multiple times. Acquire product supply, execute clandestine covert sales. So that's one XP for that. Mm -hmm. So so mark a crew XP for that one. Uh, contend with challenges above your current station. Go ahead and mark another XP for that. Uh, bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one. Remember, your reputation was strange. We opened up a ghost store and just bolted out of there. That's pretty weird. So that's only if the guards really do know who we are. Okay. That is true. Uh, take they it. Said they did. Uh -huh. I don't know if they did. I, I think I think you should take it. I think it makes sense. You open up a ghost story. It's perfect. Uh, express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of the crew. I'm not sure if no. you guys have even really figured that one out yet. No. Uh, okay. And then let's do your personal um, your personal XP, right? So, do, 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 do. so that was crew. So we have we're two crew XP away from filling up that bar. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So. Yeah, that's someone dealing drugs used a ghost door would get. Yeah, that's a good point, Beowulf. Uh, but it doesn't matter. They do know who you are. Uh, so. Uh, let's do your your personal XP. So you guys. So we'll start with like your personal playbooks. So look at your personal playbook, and if you did something, like call it out. So like, what is it you think you did, and take your XP for it. I opened the ghost door, so I used a tune. Okay. Uh, Melissa, did you do something that you think uh, hit your your leech XP? Um, when you address a challenge with technical skill or mayhem. Did you end up doing the? Uh, you didn't. You didn't end up doing the, mm -hmm. the flashback mm -hmm. with the tinker. Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, technical skill or mayhem. Do you think you did anything else? Would you say like the juggling thing was kind of mayhem? If you think so, like it's it's up to you. It's if kind you of think it is, it. it's your, yeah, it's, your, it's it, not up to me. It's literally up to you guys. I don't make the yeah, call. I, I don't think so because it talks okay. about like machinery, sparks, craft, plumbing, electrical, chemical. I don't think so. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Long, what was yours? What was your playbooks? Mine's when I address the challenge with deception or influence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll take a chance too. Uh, didn't you? No, you addressed the first. I got first, stabbed. I didn't the get first guy, stabbed. the very first, the very first obstacle. 
You tried to oh, talk really? to him. You don't. Yeah. You don't have to be successful. You don't have to succeed. You don't have to succeed. Like you just have to. It's literally vague. Like you addressed it. You did the two. I think you and Sethla teamed up initially, or no, you and Uma teamed up before Sethla hit oh. him over the head with it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. That- so. Like if you did a desperate a action, you should have taken the XP already. Uh, so remember, you take the XP in that specific um, that specific, specific attribute. Uh, how about you express your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? Anybody? I think the background uh, is actually where the juggling would come in. Uh, sure. With my family stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we established that last step that you have a, a circus family. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love that. And now you're just going keep putting all the time. It's the weirdest family. I love it. Okay. Um, what else? Um, I don't think I expressed anything about Sethlo's background. Okay. Uh, Cobb? You think so? Uh. The only thing I really did was try and sell drugs here. Okay. (laughs) Sales mid-pitch sort of deal. Was that something you've done previously? I mean... Just Isn't your background back. trade? Isn't trade. your background trade? Yeah, there you go. You're doing a sale. Yeah, you're doing a sale. Come on, it's your birthday, man. Take the fucking XP. <laughs> Don't be bashful. <laughs> in chat, Cobb's background stabbed him in the back. <laughs> like his back uh, is just littered with stab wounds. I mean, wounds. we can also make the point that like your background, meaning your background in betraying your previous partner or whatever, came back, came to, oh. to stab you in the back, literally. Mm-hmm. So, like, your background manifested in that way. Uh, and then you struggled with issues from your vice or traumas. Uh, anyone want to make a case for that? Tell okay. me. All uh, right, so I you guys got your XP. trauma yet, yeah. Yeah, I, like, I was doing some reading when, we were, when I was prepping my own character. Like, some people actually rush a trauma just so they have an extra XP tool. Like, you just get a trauma as fast as you can. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, so I have a trauma now. What happens? So you have a harm. You got stabbed, so you should have a level two harm. Also, what trauma? Yeah, I got the harm, but then I failed my stress, stress bar. So I oh, that's right, you failed your stress. Uh, so yeah, so what you do is you pick. Uh, I totally forgot about that part. So I think you pick one of the words on the right, uh, like where it says like cold, haunted, paranoid, reckless, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so you pick one of those, uh, and so I think in the character sheet you should just click it, and so that's essentially like a condition that you now have uh, as a result of this. What do you choose? I'll probably just go paranoid. I imagine oh, yeah. dangers everywhere. I can't trust others. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Perfect. You always gotta watch your six, you know. Okay. Uh, and so, and I think you have to. I think you once you click it, it should automatically on the character sheet flag your first trauma. So you see the yeah, first. Okay. And so now, um, that question I just asked about like. You know, struggles with issues from your vice or trauma is like if that if that manifests during a score, that's another way for you to get XP. So if you start playing towards the paranoia of it, you can you can get XP, which is pretty awesome. Mm. Okay, all right. So I think that's everybody's. We got all our XP. Yeah. We get yeah, so the score. I my resolve bar. So do I get like a point? Or how's that? You did what? I'm sorry. Say it again. XP wise, I failed my resolve. So yeah, nice. so you should be so if you filled your resolve, I think you're able to pick a uh, you pick one of the skills under resolve and you can increase it by a point. I believe is what you get. All right, another. I can go past the two we originally started with, right? Yeah. I'll go another sway. Okay, beautiful. I maxed it up. Okay, I like it. Excellent. Uh, so I think, I think we're done like right at the two hour mark. That was like crazy efficient. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even intend for that to happen, but, uh, okay. That's our second score, uh, <laughs> underway. Got a person nearly got stabbed to death. Uh, very close to having a level three harm ended up going down to level two harm. <laughs> you walked in uh, and, and, and to leave a tent, you went through the ghost field and drew the, and drew something back with you that now there is a clock on it. Uh, you uh what else did we do you sold you sold a lot of drugs to a well-known noble kid who was having a a fraternity party two uh two mercenaries seem to know who you are uh you drew their attention who could that possibly be i don't know i don't like that who could it possibly be who might have been interested in or, or, or in, in knowing about you all and like this score, who could possibly who could possibly have it out? Totally for you not the hive. 
it couldn't possibly be the hive this really powerful <laughs> like no merchant group that you stole from significantly it could possibly be them who have access to high level elite mercenaries it couldn't Absolutely possibly be them not it couldn't them. Yeah. it couldn't it couldn't be them Oh, the uh, forget there was some... <laughs> the Leviathan. Yeah. It's the Leviathan. They're, we're going to make a whole faction out of just the Leviathan. <laughs> right. And there was some just on the... point juggling. That was oh, that, that so. juggling stuff was intense. I love the juggling. That was great. Uh, okay. Uh, so we're going to get out of here. Uh, before we do, come check us out doing other stuff. Uh, we'll be back to Blaze in the Dark next week. We'll do more downtime. If we can go through it faster than we did last time, we might kick into a score. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we will, uh, will tomorrow night, you can catch me over on Steam Steel Murder as we're playing through Shadowrun. Um, we're starting up a new system. We've been jumping, uh, Bert, our friend uh, at Steam Steel Murder, he's been jumping us through different systems playing in the Shadowrun universe. We're starting up the One Roll engine. Uh, so you can come check that out. Uh, it's a good time to ju jump in too. It's a perfect time to hop in since it's like a sort of like a new chapter, a new story. So come check us out. Uh, Monday night back on our channel, uh, we'll be playing Ultraviolet Grasslands. Melissa and I will be in that. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, then next week on Friday, we'll be back to Delta green. Uh, and also on Thursday, unless someone tells me otherwise over on Garb Black games, uh, we're going to be starting up another Delta green run, uh, with, uh, some of the folks, uh, on that channel. And I'll be running that. Uh, you won't see anyone else here in that game, but it'll be different, different players, different agents. So come, come check that out. Uh, that's it. Uh, I'm going to put us on the end screen. I'm going to raid somebody else. We're going to watch some awesome stuff on a Saturday and enjoy the rest of it. Thank you for those of you who hung out. Thank you for the bits. Happy birthday to Long. Happy uh, birthday to Long. Thank Bye you for the subs. Uh, all of you people are really wonderful. And thanks for just helping us out with ideas. And it's really awesome. Like I love, I like how Blaze in the Dark, we can just like take ideas from the chat and just like totally throw them right into the game right away. For it's sure. just like perfect. It's just like throwing out these cool ideas. So uh so good night, everybody. We're out of here. Bye. Bye guys. Later.